Welcome back to Open Line, talking about a new bill that has just passed in the Metro Council called the Do Better Bill. Kind of explaining that, what is it, how does it impact um, when businesses now go before the council looking for uh, tax incentives of some kind. Um, we have with us Odessa Kelly with Stand Up for Nashville, Vonna McDaniel, Central Labor Council of Nashville, the president. Uh, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Joe. Hello, Joe. Hey. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Um, just wanted to say that America, you know, is full of uh, urban cities where where folks are just trying to make ends meet, and and, and that's why we have a welfare and a food stamp program and uh, and, and the NOSHA that controls safety and everything. This do better bill just sounds like another bureaucracy that that they want to kind of take control of that instead of having. I mean, what, what's already in place, including the food banks. I mean, food banks are for anybody. They shouldn't just be for you know the wealthy or the or the poor. They should be for whoever needs food at the time. I'd like you to comment on that. Thanks. Another bureaucracy is what he's saying, huh? um, and and there are already programs in place to help people. Okay, so what what do you what do you think about that? Well, Joe, I I agree with you as far as food banks. They are open to everyone. I uh, anyone who is in need of food can come to a food bank uh, anywhere in the city and get one. Uh, uh, as far as uh, the bureaucracy part, as far as the Do Better Bill, it's just understand. It is just information, right? That's all it is. All it is is giving you the information, Joe, so you can have it right in front of you and weigh in on whether you think that this is good for the city and for your taxpayer dollars to go toward. That's all it is. And uh, what pushback did you get? I mean, so there's Joe. Maybe, maybe he's opposed to it. Um, mm -hmm. What pushback did you get as you tried to get this through the council? What, what did those opposed to it say? Um, so what some of the opponents of the bill um, said that transparency for companies and providing that level of information about their internal uh, private uh, company information would cause companies not to uh, seek the tax incentives or come to Nashville. Um, but what I would say is that in terms of transparency, that improves the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. That gives the council people that are making the decisions, the IDB board, um, a way of evaluating deals in a way that to evaluate quickly whether it makes sense for the citizens of Nashville. So rather than increasing bureaucracy, I would say the Do Better Bill decreases bureaucracy. I hope that we'll see that as, as we kind of get into well, it. Well, now I think what he's saying is, well, here's another hurdle. So they're going to have to they're going to have to present this information. Is this information they were not? Is, it obviously must be information they weren't providing before. You're saying, okay, you're going to get this incentive, uh, a pilot, a tax incentive mm -hmm. of some kind. Um, tell us what sort of job. What what, what are the jobs you're going to create? What are they going to pay? That's what you're basically demanding, right? No, we're we're asking for information around their safety records, around the different the different kinds of jobs they're going to create. Um, but not only that, many times the public has very little information prior to a deal passing. So there are some minimum standards that we think that the community should have to determine whether these are beneficial to the community and whether we should be advocating to our council people whether this is something we, we want, we want, would like to see in our city, or whether this is something that probably we could take a pass on because we're doing well. We're doing well. Oh, yeah. And the minimum standards that they must provide would be what type of jobs, their safety record, whether they'll be using apprenticeships. Uh, apprenticeship, certified apprenticeship programs, whether they'll be using temp agencies. The training um, they'll receive. Um, and how many safety violations they've mm -hmm. had over the course of the last several years. Do they have benefits? Those type of things. So do their jobs come with benefits? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, let's go to Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Yes. Go right ahead. Michelle, go ahead. Okay, hi. I'm. Um, I was listening in earlier, and I heard Miss um, Kelly talking about how there are people with um, that, are, that are working poor, the people who have education, who don't really make uh, the money uh, with their degree, 
But my problem is an issue is about the housing market and how these companies come and they build these condos and these apartments and the people who live here, um, who were born here, can't afford to live in the areas that they were, they want to. It's almost like you're moving everyone out. Um, I'm, I live like an, uh, almost an hour away from my job because I can't afford to live in that area. And um, I think a lot of people in Nashville are having having this issue of having to be pushed to the outskirts because they can't afford to live closer in town like we used to. That's my comment. Thank you. All right, so how would this help with that situation? Which is, it's a huge situation in Nashville. We hear about it all the time. Yeah. Affordable housing, people can't afford to live here. Um, here's somebody who's lived here a long time. She now has to commute, live farther out. How does what you're doing with this bill help her? Well, like Vonda said earlier, it's a start. Um, what, what was the lady's name again? I'm, that was Michelle who just called. Um, Michelle, <laughs> I'm in the same boat with you. Uh, I'm a Nashville native, uh, been here my whole life, and I absolutely love this city. And I feel that same thing. I was raised in East Nashville in the Inglewood area, and that uh, has gone to what we call it a, a, the term gentrification. Uh, you know, so what my neighborhood looked like uh, when I left for college is not what it looked like when I got back. You know, it was a completely different feel. Uh, as much as I love East Nashville and all the great things and gains and, that have come with it, you know, I hate some of my neighbors who had to leave. You know, I had, uh, I, I had neighbors who were blue collar workers. You know, they were custodians their life, and them being custodians, they were able to purchase homes and live well in Nashville. And due to the uh, boom in Nashville, you know, and us becoming the it city, they got priced out of their own neighborhoods in their own home. You know, so yeah, the do better bill is a start at that. You know, sustainability is something that is needed. You know, we can talk about affordable housing all day, but we have to make sure it, that it's sustainable. I don't care at what, we're not talking about race, we're not talking about uh, gender or any of those things, we're talking about something that affects Nashville across the board. Race, gender, creed, color, everything. Everyone is feeling the effect of this, you know? So I, I would say that the Do Better Bill is a step in moving toward that make sure that those companies who are coming here to provide our workforce that they provide them with workforces that help you allow to do things so you don't have to live an hour away from your job i want to stay in the city right and whether i have what is considered a good job or not i want to stay here because that's one of the things that's going around now we talk about i don't even want to use the word good job you know i work for metro parks and recreation right it's a great job I know teachers who are having the affordable housing issue. Is that not a good job? Or is there something wrong with what's being paid? Huh. Let's go to David. Hello, David. Yes, I'm glad I'm glad you took my call. Good, go right ahead. Yes. Let me start by saying the first caller does not know what he's talking about. <laughs> and I can tell you that you still have not fully understood what they are talking about, what this bill is. Let me give you an example. They talked about the Music City Center. Right. Prior to the Music City Center, I was here when there was a hole in the ground for the National Convention Center, not on Broadway. That convention center was built decades ago. Built, the Renaissance Hotel was built with it. The reason you didn't see hotels spring up to this place where the library, library currently is who would have been is because that Renaissance Hotel was built and it controlled how much a hotel would charge for guests that to stay in that hotel. Okay, all right, um, with the old convention center. Now, the Music City Center was built. Okay, when the built to build it when went to the went to Metro Council. What happened was things in it were not fully on that were not fully made 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 out. Now now that it's built, there is a company called MMM that 
one was a company that made music, the former music city center, the music center, to be proposed. Now, this hotel now, because things were withheld at Metro Council, this hotel now are making twice the money they, they can make any money they want. Now they're making twice the profit. Mm -hmm. Who's making the profit? The incentives that we're giving to them, but there were certain things that are hidden inside the uh, 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 inside the bill that was sent to Metro Council. Right. So there were incentives hidden inside the bill to build the convention center, is what you're saying. And who's profiting off that? The hotels? Yes, because now okay. Metro can not control what they're doing. Okay. All right, all, right, let's, all right, let's talk about what he... You, you're on the Convention Center board. I am. Um, you supported the Convention Center. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you're hearing some of what he's saying here. What, 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 what do you think about what he's saying? Well, from what I believe is that the Convention Center was an economic stimulus for the city. We've seen exponential growth. Um, what, what we want to see as we move forward as a result of that growth is a creating a community where everybody benefits, where a rising tide lifts all ships. Um, what we're seeing now, I, I heard him say something about the high cost of hotel rooms. You know, hopefully over the next couple of years as the inventory of hotel rooms increases, that problem will subside. What kinds of jobs will we create as we open more and more hotels. I think that's the challenge, that's the discussion as a city as to you know, what those workers will be um, making. Will they be able to live in the city? Um, right. I read something- We're a tourist type city. We're heavily um, a service oriented yes. economy. Are those great jobs? I mean, if we have a bunch more hotels, are those gonna be the kind of jobs that are gonna have big wages? Well, let me see. Okay, so <laughs> a large portion of Nashville population would be considered blue collar workers, right? I don't look down on blue collar workers. I think they have the right to have good a good living in Nashville, right? So when we talk about wages, um, I know this: the industry that employs them is flush. Right? It's not like they're hurting for the next dollar. <laughs> How hard is it for them to evaluate the quality of life of their employees and then make a better decision to, about what they're going to do to make sure that the, that the people who are ensuring that the quality of their hotel is intact can also live in the city? I just, I mean, you're, you're, you're right, we're, we're, we're booming with tourism and people and making sure that we do best for those who come into the city. I want to make sure that we do what's best by those who provide that. You know, the Omni Hotel, I mean, all these hotels can't be who they are without the employees that work there. They're the ones that make Nashville the it city. All right, we have to take a break. Um, if you're on the line, hold on. If you want to call in, a couple lines open. 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. We'll be back right after this.